This is Art in Architecture by Jason Cheng. We're going to start with Baroque architecture. It began in the 16th century and lasted until the 18th century. Its primary location was Europe, and it apexed in France. As far as its primary features, Baroque style will often feature sculpted details. Optical illusions were used to make buildings and rooms appear larger than they typically were. You will also see repetition and mixture of curves and sharp edges. Now let's take a look at St. Peter's Basilica. We can see the immediate use of the combination of edges found on the majority of the corners and curves as seen in the domes. In this picture, we clearly see the curved structures surrounding the Egyptian obelisk located in St. Peter's Square. We also have an excellent view of the repetitive features of the Vatican, such as the many pillars surrounding the obelisk, as well as the design repetition to the entrance of St. Peter's. In this church, designed and constructed by Francesco Baronini, you will immediately notice the several beautiful sculpted figures decorating the exterior. Also, there is an excellent example of curves placed between the first and second stories of this church. Now this is the Palace of Versailles, located in France. Louis Levaux was the main architect. This structure is often seen as a cornerstone piece in Baroque style due to its lavish exterior features that are replicated throughout the entire building. One of the most famous rooms in the Palace of Versailles is the Hall of Mirrors. You will notice the mirrors on the left side, and due to their large size, it creates the illusion that the room is much larger than it truly is. In addition to the mirrors, we see themes of repetition and exquisite sculpted decorations lining the walls. Now we will move to Georgian architecture, named after the first four British monarchs of the House of Hanover, George I, II, III, and IV. Its prevalence reigned between the 18th and 19th century in colonial America and Europe. It features simple shapes and colors and uses plenty of windows. It lacked decorated details, but you will notice lots of symmetry. Lastly, there was a transition from flat to steep pitch rooftops. This is Massachusetts Hall, designed by John Leverett the oldest surviving building at a Harvard College. Take note of its symmetry and relatively plain design when compared to those of Baroque style of architecture. The significant number of windows was meant to maximize the amount of natural light coming in during the daylight. This is Westover Plantation, a tobacco farm designed by William Byrd in Virginia. It is visually similar to Massachusetts Hall in terms of the use of windows and its symmetry. Again, we see the use of angled rooftops. Now we can introduce neoclassical architecture. Similarly to Georgian architecture, neoclassical occurred during the time period of 18th and 19th century in colonial America and Europe. Its styles are reminiscent of ancient Greek and Roman architecture through features such as pattern designs and tall dramatic pillars. This revival of traditional styles took advantage of the new engineering methods and materials that arose from the Industrial Revolution. This is the Vilnius Cathedral in Lithuania. Clearly, we see features that represent more recent styles such as a pitched rooftop, but the classic use of structural pillars would be something that you would see on the Greek Pantheon.
This building might be more familiar to you. It's the White House, designed by James Hoban. Again, we see symmetry and patterns as well as the extravagant use of pillars. You will notice the White House, the Vilnius Cathedral, and many other structures from the neoclassical era are painted in white and are modeled after Greek temples which were thought to represent principles of peace and justice. Finally, we have modernist architecture, which arose during the turn of the 20th century, predominantly in the United States. It has characteristics that many call form follows function, which is the principle that the shape of an object or building should be primarily based upon its intended purpose or function. In order to do this, there must be a careful mixture of extravagance and simplicity. Additionally, there is a significant amount of industrial materials such as iron and steel, which were not present in previous eras. You will also notice the lack of superfluous details on modernist structures. One of the most famous architects of modernist architecture is Frank Lloyd Wright, designer of Falling Water in Western Pennsylvania. You might notice that materials used such as the stone and the cantilevered terraces representing the surrounding landscape are meant to be harmonious with the surrounding nature. The house is built on top of an active waterfall which lies beneath the house, which further embeds itself in the simplicity of nature. This is the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum, another one of Wright's great works. It was established in 1937 and is located on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, New York. The odd shape of the building would not have been possible pre-industrial revolution due to the need for high-strength materials. Wright explains the symbolism of the building's shapes with, quote, These geometric forms suggest human ideas, moods, sentiments, as for instance, the circle, infinity, the triangle, structural integrity, the spiral, organic progress, the square, integrity, end quote. Lastly, this is the Seagram Building, also located in New York. It was designed by Ludwig van der Rohe and Philip Johnson. This 38-story skyscraper uses a steel frame and reinforced concrete core. As you can see, there is no superfluous details and follows a very simple design guideline. It currently serves as an office building, and its style is representative of a professional and clean look. This concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching.